Welcome back, my friends, to TFT Hyper Roll with Artark. And today's video is going to cover a build that may get more popular in the next patch because there's going to be a buff to 8 bit. So, uh, this could be one worth keeping an eye on. And you gotta love when everyone just jumps on the same portal and then someone decides to go elsewhere just to be a spoiler. But. Luckily, the spoiler doesn't get to win, and we're going to end up with our component anvils. Remember, I've said this in so many videos, when you get component anvils, don't open them until you have a pretty good idea of which way the build is going. I see a lot of people open them right after the first round, and then end up with a headliner or something that changes their entire build. Get an idea first, then open them. Here we go into our first set of augments with not sure what we're going to do. Cut above is always a decent one if you're planning on going with an AD backline type build. I was not yet sure but I decided to grab it and then found the quirky big shot just hanging out in my shop to say hello. So very quickly, Corky is going to get a Death Blade and of course a Rage Blade because that is going to be a key item. We're able to pick up two Sentinels and we're on our way. And I was glad to get the Garen before the first round so I could start ticking up 8-bit. As I mentioned, there's going to be a slight buff at the current level. It's 4.5% in the patch. It'll be 5% with 2 and then go up to 9% at 4 and even though Mort stated that the patch was locked, it is probably subject to change if they see something that's completely unbalanced as they go, but it didn't look like anything's getting changed that drastically. Item choice here is easy for me, sparring glove, meet bow, it becomes last whisperer, and this creates a really good combination on Corky, who's going to now be shredding armor as well as doing additional damage, thanks to 8-bit and Big Shot. Sentinels appear to be getting a smidge of a nerf at 6 and 8, but I don't think it's enough that it's going to impact this build very much. Second set of augments and cannot resist insert coin at this point. We're running 8 bits. This will now kind of encourage us to go to the 4 8 bits. Oh, by the way, also Corky is getting a slight nerf. It's really, really slight. So again, I don't expect it to have a major impact on this build. Our strategy remains very similar to the Rapid Fire Guardians, although Insert Coin will switch it at some point, but I did want to get to the four Sentinels before starting to build out the 8-bit. And in reality, I'm likely saving that Riven for once we have a Caitlyn so we can go straight to the four 8-bit and get the next boost. Adding Riven in right now isn't going to help too much, especially at one star, while any Sentinel added is going to be getting double the boost that the Sentinels are giving the team. Item choice coming up here could go with the bow and pair it with the sword for the Giant Slayer, but I'd rather continue to tank up the front line, getting close to a three-star Cassante, so want to have additional things there, and we're gonna keep picking up Rivens as we go to get ready for the swap over to 8-bit. The ultimate vision for the build now can still be six Sentinels, but it will involve then Corky, Caitlyn, and Riven, so we have the four 8-bit and are getting the complete bonus from that. It is time to look at our final set of augments. Nothing exciting in the first group. Portable Forge always has possibilities. Normally, I would go bigger shot, except for the fact that we have insert coins. So I'm not necessarily going to be stepping into following full big shot. So we go for the artifact and we can get something that will help make Cassante even tankier and stay up longer. Now, because we have insert Coin, I have not been trying to pick up additional Corkies as I go because I plan to sell Corky at the beginning of stage 8 so I can hopefully pick up a Caitlyn as my headliner because she's going to have the best chance to pull off the executes. 
and start of stage eight it's time to say goodbye to corky as our headliner we can bring in blitz bring ourselves temporarily at least to six sentinels and then we want to go looking for caitlin she appeared really quickly which was so nice of her and the quirky items that were already on him are going to work perfectly on Caitlyn. So she'll get a Rage Blade, Death Blade, and Last Whisperer. And now is also the time to bring in Riven. So we're pretty much set. And it is time for our final individual item. Easy one. Like to get a Rage Blade on Quirky anyway because as an 8-bit, he has the ability to execute. So it's going to be good to having him attack fast. But it's not going to be all sunshines and rainbows because uh, there's Spellweaver Annie teams out there. And she is getting a slight nerf slash buff in the next patch where her double attacks are going to be reduced but her individual attacks are going to be a little bit stronger. It is time for an individual item choice and I'm going to go ahead and grab the Hand of Justice for Corky. Just again because he's an 8-bit and 8-bits can execute, I'd like more power on him. And my last two goals for this build is to bring in the 6th Sentinel and then Ezreal, who will enhance Corky just a little bit. So we're not going to be Ezreal-centric, but he will play a big part. And it is time for an item choice, and I decide to go with Redemption to put on Blitz and then move him to the center so he can help keep the Sentinels in place so that our backline can do what our backline needs to do. And we've got kind of a cool story brewing on the bench as we've got a second two-star Kate, we've got a two-star Ezreal, and then two more additional Ezreals. So I'm wondering if I can get to a lot of three stars here. But either way, we are now into the top four and have an item choice to make. And I'm a little torn because I'm bringing in Ezreal next, and blue buff is a good item for Ezreal, but I'm going to go ahead and grab the Giant Slayer that I can put on Corky and just fill him out because he's the one most likely to do more executing. And of course, the Spellweaver Annie team has made it into the top four, and I really thought I had a good chance in this particular fight, especially with the six Sentinels and the fact that Caitlyn is just picking up attack speed as she goes and can execute people. But when she didn't get the gold three-star Vex out, Annie is able to stun us, and that is enough to knock us down to one life left. It is time for the last two item choices of the game, and we're just going to go ahead and add some Ezreal items since he is a big shot. Getting him a Last Whisperer will allow him to just shred a little more armor, which will make it easier for Corky and Caitlyn to get through them and get to the Execute. And this is one of those intense stress moments for me because this is often where I've lost it because... I see the gold 3-star champion I need, but I'm against a team that I feel could beat me. Because we have the Deathblade bonus, we get the money, we have our gold 3-star Caitlyn, and I'm just hoping to get through, and we get through, and we get to get our gold 3-star Caitlyn that has Execute. So, this is going to be good. And with Caitlyn up at three stars, things are going to become a lot easier. I'm also picking up five costs when I can, if only to keep the other teams out there from getting a three star five cost. Because if I can have a couple of each of them on my bench, uh, they're not likely to get it. And she's giving me a lot of gold to work with because remember, we're getting paid for each execute on those death blades. And it is down to us against the Spell Weaver Annie team with the gold three star Vex. I have positioned everyone just a little bit differently to try to distract the Akali on their team because I don't want to get caught up on that. The reality is it's going to come down to whether Caitlyn can one shot Annie like she did there. If she can repeat that, we're pretty good to go. And we're just going to go ahead and check in and make sure they are not trying to get any 
five costs and they aren't. Also, since Caitlyn is going to hit the further targets, I want her away from Annie and Vex because I want her to target them when she gets the chance. Her ult is going to target the four furthest champions rather than the closest ones and I need to get those champions down because they're the ones that can destroy us. Luckily, again, Caitlyn is just able to execute everyone and it's GG for everyone. I expect 8-Bit to be a big part of the new meta, so give this build a chance, learn it while you can. Hope you enjoyed the video and as always have an absolutely, absolutely awesome day.